Hi, what's up guys? It's again Dr. Mohsen Tiwana here. And in today's lecture, lecture, we are going to talk about the two most important procedures in the GSM network. Uh, and those procedures are authentication and ciphering which are related to the security in the mobile networks. Now, first of all, we come to the question, what is authentication? Authentication is a procedure by which a mobile station has to authenticate itself with the network. And this is basically used to prevent the, prevent the illegal usage of the network by some user who is not authorized to uh, use a network. And then we have the ciphering procedure. Basically, ciphering, by, uh, the purpose of ciphering is to encrypt the communication between the base station and the mobile station in the uplink and the downlink uh, on the air interface so that someone else may not hear it and understand it. So uh, first of all I want you to uh, understand that this lecture consists of two parts. In the first part we are going to talk about the important identifiers or the parameters which are used in the authentication and the ciphering procedure as well as the algorithms that are used. Uh, and then in the second part we will see that actually how they are implemented in the network and in, one ent in what entities these algorithms are uh, implemented and what, are, what is the signal flow in between those entities during uh, the time these algorithms are being executed. So, first of all, uh, the, uh, an important parameter is RAND or the random number. It is basically a 128-bit random number which is generated by the network and used by the network as well as sent over the air interface to the mobile station to be used by it in the authentication as well as in the ciphering. And then you have the authentication key. It is a 128-bit uh, authentication key which is unique to every user and it is uh, basically burned into the same of the user and for the security purposes this authentication key K of I is never leaves the same and it is never transmitted over the air interface and uh, basically uh, this random number and K of I are used by the network as well as by the mobile station in the sim of the mobile station uh, for the A3 algorithm which is used for the authentication. And when you uh, input K of file and this random number to A3 algorithm, you will get SRES or the signed response which is a 32-bit sequence number. And this signed response is calculated in the sim of the mobile station as well as the in the network and uh, once this has been uh, calculated in the same of the mobile station then this number is sent over the air interface to the network so that network will tell the two signed responses that of the network and that which has been sent by the mobile station and if they do match in that case we see uh, we uh, conclude that this is a valid or perfectly uh, authorized user of the network and once the authentication procedure is complete then we go to the ciphering procedure and in the ciphering procedure consists of two parts first one is the generation of the ciphering key uh, and then in the second part this ciphering key is used to basically encrypt the data so in the first part a8 algorithm is used for the generation of ciphering key and a8 algorithm has two inputs just like a3 algorithms k of i and a random number which has been supplied by the network and the output of a8 algorithm is the ciphering key and ciphering key is a 64 bit number and there is another associated number with the ciphering key which is known as ciphering key sequence number and because ciphering key is the key which is being used for the encryption of data therefore it is never sent on the air interface and in some uh, in some conditions we will uh, get to them later on uh, 
the ciphering key sequence number is sent over the air interface from the mobile station to the network uh, in, uh, for the instead of ciphering key and uh, then uh, once the ciphering keys has been generated how it is used in the in uh, encryption procedure the actual encryption of data is uh, done by the a5 algorithm and when we talk about the a5 algorithm a5 algorithm has three inputs one is the ciphering key second one is the frame number the 8 bit tdma frame its frame number uh, and it has it is a it, it this train uh, frame number is 22 bits this means that this frame number actually is, uh, repeats itself after 2 raised to the power 22 frames and so this means that for every frame actually the output of this a5 algorithm is changing so uh, after these after these two inputs the third input is the 114 bit of user data the user data is divided into the frames of 114 bit and uh, it and then it is input into the A5 algorithm and the output of the A5 algorithm is 114 bit encrypted data and now in the second part of this uh, lecture or tutorial we actually go, uh, go uh, and see that how these procedures are carried out in the network and what are the entities that are involved there. So welcome to my computer and now we are going to uh, discuss what is the authentication procedure, what is its signal flow and what are the entities involved. Now here we see that the authentication center in the core network or in the network NSS plays a very vital role in the authentication procedure because here it is uh, it uses the random number or the rand in order to generate the security triplet and what we this means that it uses the random num number to generate the SRES and the ciphering key KC. So these three thi things random number SRES and KC are known as the security triplet. Now this random number is then sent on the air interface to the mobile station side and the authentication center is using this random number and the K of I that it has uh, as an input to the A3 algorithm in order to generate the signed response or SRES. Similarly on the mobile station side this, the random number that is received from the network is then given to the SIM card which has the authentication key KI and it KI never leaves the same so A3 algorithm is implemented in the same card and KI and the random number are input to the A3 algorithm in the same card to generate the uh, signed response of the mobile which we here we are calling as SRESM so then this SRESM is sent back to the network where it is compared with the original SRES and if they are the same then we proceed to the next step which is to start the ciphering mode and for the ciphering mode basically uh, authentication center uh, generates the ciphering key using the same inputs as the A3 algorithm which is the K of I and the random number to generate the ciphering key and similarly on the mobile station side uh, ciphering key is generated in the sim because a8 algorithm is implemented in the sim with ki and the random number as its as its input it generates the ciphering key now we come to the question that what are the network elements uh, that are involved and what is the signal flow between those network elements during the authentication procedure the here we have the MSC here we have the VLR here we have the HLR 
and here we have authentication center many times authentication center is rather mostly authentication center is built as a part of the HLR and here we have the BSC and the BTS so VLR asks the HLR to uh, to give to VLR the security triplets this means the random number SRES and the ciphering key which have previously been generated by the authentication center so HLR then queries the authentication center for the uh, security triplet this security triplet then uh, goes to the VLR by passing through the HLR and from the VLR the only the random number goes to the MSC and from MSC it goes to the BSC and from BSC it passes to the BTS and then it over the air interface it goes to the mobile station and inside the mobile station then this random number is given to the sim card which has the k of i and a3 algorithm and these two inputs generate the signed response on the uh, on the mobile station side inside the sim and this signed response is then again given to the mobile station sent over the air interface in the uplink direction to the bts then to bsc and then to MSC and then to VLR and in the VLR basically the two signed responses are SRES uh, numbers are compared to check whether this is a valid user or not if the, it is the so this means that the user has been authenticated as it is a valid user and then ciphering mode command is given to the MSC so that that and this command then goes to the BSC and then to BTS and then to the mobile station and after that the ciphering uh, of the data uh, between the BTS and the MSC uh, starts now how ci ciphering is achieved in the mobile network ciphering is done in two parts of the network uh, bet uh, and between two parts of the network that is BTS and the MSC this means that both of these parts have both of them have the ciphering key and that is the same ciphering key that they should have and for example here BTS is using the ciphering key and the frame number 22 bit frame number in order to generate the um, 114 bit uh, ciphering sequence in the uplink and one uh, 14 bit of the ciphering sequence in the downlink similarly mobile in the mobile station and here uh, we must clarify that it is not the same rather it's the mobile station itself that is using the ciphering key generated from the same as well as the frame number uh, in order to generate the ciphering sequences for both uplink and the downlink so this is the data that is to to be transmitted on the uplink and here we can see that first it is being uh, ciphered by this 114 bit ciphering sequence and data is also divided into the frames of 114 bit and ciphered and then sef, uh, sent over the radio interface in the uplink direction and in the BTS the same uh, ciphering sequence actually deciphers the data because we are, are doing exclusive OR operation uh, both on in the mobile station and in the BTS and if we exclusive or a sequence two times with the uh, data then we get the original data and similarly in the downlink side here we are uh, ciphering the data with 114 bit ciphering sequence in the downlink and again using the same, ci same ciphering sequence we are deciphering the data so this is the um, how the ciphering procedure works in the uplink and in the downlink direction using the A5 algorithm and as you see that one input to this ciphering algori algorithm is frame number and it's 22 bits uh, number this means that it repeats after 2 raised to power 22 frames this frame number so this means that for every frame uh, the ciphering sequence is changing making or ciphering more secure 
and then what are the network elements that are involved and what is the signal flow between them so here uh, we see that in the VLR we have the security triplet from the authentic after we completed the authentication procedure uh, and we send the, the ciphering key to the MSC and this ciphering key is then sent to the BSC and then this ciphering key is uh, basically extracted by the BTS but it is not sent over the air interface rather what is sent over the air interface is the cipher mode command and on the mobile station side ciphering key is generated using the uh, RKC is generated using the A8 algorithm and then this ciphering key is used in the mobile station itself as an input to the A5 along with the frame number in order to generate the ciphering sequence and two ciphering sequences for the uplink and the downlink and then once those uh, and then once this procedure has started it confirms the BTS that ciphering mode is complete and now the tra transmission and reception of ciphering data starts in the uplink and the downlink and in the last step uh, when this ciphering data transfer starts the BS has confirmed to the MSC that ciphering mode is complete and now uh, the communication is encrypted now we talk about the condition in which the authentication of a user is not required and this is the case of multi-party conference call for example this mobile station is already in a call with uh, with this mobile station and then these two users decide that now we have to include a third user in the call as well and this will be done by this mobile station so what this mobile station will now do that it will basically put its call with this user on a hold and then dial the number of this mobile station and then it dials the number of this mobile station it would also send its current CKSM which was being used for its call with this mobile station and send it to the MSC. So MSC when it would see this CKSM number then it would decide that this was this is the CKSM number which is currently in use by this mobile station for the call with this mobile station. So there is no need to re-authenticate uh, this user and uh, so it would so the previous uh, the CKSN number which is currently uh, used by this mobile station would be perfectly valid.